When duty calls, the LAPD responds. Let's be careful out there. Working as a team to protect and to serve. Whoever's got a gun, leave us alone! Why don't you just let her go? We have a critical missing. I lost my puppy. To fight crime and to keep our streets safe. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inside the LAPD. I'm Mary Grady, Public Information Director for the Los Angeles Police Department. When you hear about officers cracking down on crime, most people envision officers in a black and white or on motorcycles. But cops on horseback? You bet. Because if you think about it, Los Angeles once was the wild, wild west. So keeping true to the city's history, the LAPD has its very own mounted unit. 33 horses and 35 officers who are dedicated to keeping you and the streets of LA safe. Today we're at the LAPD Mounted Academy and we're going to see the officers and the horses prepare to do some crime suppression four-legged style. Okay, so we're coming up to the, these cones here with the uh, blue tube. Uh -huh. What's the point of this exercise? To be honest, this actual exercise is a lateral movement. It's a side pass exercise, but we're just going to have you step over it because the horse's ability to step over an object in the street is just as crucial. So the same thing with the bridge. If you know anything about horses, you know that anything that can make a sound and move can scare a horse. So this tarp, which has that plastic kind of sound as the dirt strikes it, it has an ability to frighten a horse and it can move. So it's something that we want our horses to feel comfortable in. Right. And being able to do that. Maybe if you can, Mary, just turn your horse to the right and come in between these cones and then make a left hand turn and circle around that cone. Ultimately, we want to be able to control the horse's feet and put them wherever we want to do. So turning right, left, around any kinds of objects, this is a trash can in the field, this is anything, this is basically fundamental just horsemanship that we would have in the field. Maybe we can come back this way again and we can work back over this tarp again. And just try to ask your horse to walk over the center of the tarp. For a lot of horses, just this basic activity is difficult, but our, every horse in our barn needs to be able to accomplish that kind of task. And again, we're looking at it going backwards this way. Another thing to kind of appreciate about horses and why I'm asking you to go in this direction is horses see things from the right side and the left side of their body. So what he perceives from one side of his body, if he's looking at an object from the right eye, is not going to be the way he's going to understand it from his left eye. So whatever we do on one side, we do on the other. If we go circles to the right, we also go circles to the left, just to keep our horse balanced. Okay. So. In the field, you might discover that if you're walking by some object, your horse isn't afraid of that object, but if you go the opposite way, suddenly now it's become a monster. And so you're, it's really important that you work both sides of your horse all the time. Maybe if you can, turn, make a right-hand turn and turn your horse into the rail. If I was a person on the ground and you were asking me to move and I was reluctant to, to listen to your command as a police officer, then you would be, have the right to use your horse to create distance and ask me to, to support that idea that I'm moving. So right now I'm going to ask you, just turn your horse's head to the left, to your left, and ask him to step forward, keep on walking forward. Just make sure he turns his head to the left, and just keep on pushing and squeezing him to go forward. Uh, right leg or left leg? Both legs, just oh, drive him legs. forward. Just make him come forward. You okay. want to make him walk forward. All right? Either way, direction. So he needs to be brave and needs to step into my direction. Okay, look out behind you. It's okay. <laughs> um, 
He needs to be able to go forward through a person. If the if the rider's asking him to do that, then he needs to be he able, needs to, be do able to do that. that. Ask your horse to go forward three steps. Count the steps. So you should be able to feel it. And then you, I want you to stop your horse. Ask him. I want you to do that right now. Ask, squeeze him to make go forward like you're walking that in that direction, and see if you can kind of feel one, two, three, and then say whoa. Okay. All right. That's and all. What's this horse's name? Otto. Otto. Okay. Otto, three steps. <laughs> one, two, three. Whoa. Oh. Perfect. It's that kind of control that you demonstrate. That's the kind of precision that we need, like before on Venice on the boardwalk. Right. It might only be one step I can take. Okay. And you just said. I want you to, you know, he's not understanding. He didn't right, understand exactly. the dialogue, one, two, three, but your body told him, one, two, two three, three, stop. Okay? okay. So, you want why don't you, now I want you to sit back. So, put yourself in the back position, which is basically push a little weight in your stirrup this way, right. kind of slightly lean back, and then say that word back, and then draw back on his face and ask him to back. So, pull back on his face and make back. him step back. One step back. Good. Two steps back. Three steps back. Excellent. Okay. And we want to have that kind of precision, forward, back, left, right. Okay. Let's just say, talk about moving laterally. I want you to hold, control his forward movement, balance his head so he doesn't turn his head to the left or right. Okay. Apply your right leg and control his forward movement and step over towards me. Stick your right leg on him and ask him to step over laterally towards me. Good. But you need to hold him with both hands, just okay. for right now, okay. until you get a little bit pro more proficient with your hands. Hold him steady and then put your right leg on him. And just have him right leg, just right leg. I want him to come over this way. So don't pull back on his face. See if you can kind of curb. Just hold him. And just, yeah. There you go. Now he's moving over laterally. That's more of a lateral, just like that. That was Got sweet, it. right like that. That was perfect. Much so you're better. just balancing what you're him a little bit better with your hands, but right. that was part of it. Now let's do the same thing. Left leg and stick, stick him over that way. So now you're moving him over to some degree with some kind of precision to the right. And so that's kind of what we also need. He needs to come off and, and respond to leg pressure. And that's important for us to be able to do our work. So it's important for any kind of horse activity. If right. your horse doesn't listen to your leg, you might as well not even be riding. <laughs> that was good. No spurs either. And no spurs, <laughs> yeah. A lot of or people ask us why we wear spurs. <clears throat> and to be honest, if, if you understand about riding, just because I'm wearing spurs doesn't mean I'm going to use them. No, so, it's just like pressure points, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. The way you, that we ride a horse is the same way that like an officer would have a use of force scale. You escalate and de-escalate as necessary. You escalate your force level to accomplish the task that you need to accomplish at that, at that time. The minute that you can get something for less, um, uh, then we go to a, to a lesser way of asking. So if I can get my horse to respond, for example, just verbalization to go that way, great. But, right. And I will increase the level of force. I like to think of going to my spur as like going to like the level 10 in terms of my force. So, and unfortunately for us, there's sometimes like we're in the middle of the street, let's say going down Broadway in the middle of traffic. If my horse is frightened about something and wants to push me off into traffic, it's not negotiable that I go into traffic at that point. Right. I have to keep him straight and keep him in, in line. And so we will use our spur in those kinds of situations if everything else has failed and he still, in spite of the fact that we're holding our leg on him, he still wants to push us out in a dangerous position. Okay. So, but we, just, just the fact that we're wearing spurs doesn't mean we're using them. Right. Now, you were having one of the other horses step over the cones or trying to center. Can we try that? Sure, let's try because it. Because that's because horses sure. often have to step over things. Anything. It could be uh, an incidental piece of trash. It could be anything, that, any object that's in their way. They need to be able to, to laterally move over that. So let's just take this one cone right here. Here's three. I'm just going to make it simple, and we're just going to make it one. And in fact, I'm going to put this cone right here and line everything up for you. Okay? All right. And this is just a little balancing act between forward, back, left, and right, but you're going to ask your horse to step, to laterally pass over that cone. So, Oops. And there you kind of just pull his head around and you right. need it. That, that again, you just kind of need to balance them. So, and it kind of takes some trick between how you're shifting your weight and how you're using your hands and your legs in conjunction with each other, but that's the movement that would have successfully allowed you to pass that cone. Right. Continue with what you're doing and see if he'll pass over it. Well done, and that's exactly what we need to do in the oh. field that kind of activity. No. All right? No. It's really kind of slow. It's not really dynamic <laughs> and exciting kinds of movements, oh, but it's something close. that we need that kind of precision. <laughs> so, All right, let me try some of these and sure. see. Sure. We're going to walk over here. Okay. So how long does it take to train an officer to do all of this? Um, 
For a new officer coming into, the, into our unit, we put them through our own five-week riding school. So, but in the course of that school, they're riding five days a week. Presently, we're on a 10-hour day, so they have 10-hour days of riding, and they do that for five weeks. So most officers are getting more riding time in the saddle than the average person who'd be taking lessons. Right. You figure the average person maybe rides two or three times a week who's really an a avid horse riding enthusiast. Um, and the amount of time that that lesson would be would be 45 minutes or an hour. Our guys are riding triple that, quadruple that every single day. He's like, who is this woman and what is she <laughs> trying to get me to do? They know. They know yeah. if you know what you're doing or not. Yeah. But that was really nice what you just did right there. You just side passed right over it. Okay. So that was perfect. Let me see if I can get him to go right back over it. That's nice, really nice. It's just kind of a little game in terms of being able to apply, you know, apply the appropriate pressure where you need to to get the horse to accomplish what you're trying to get it to, hunt, to do. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> no, we missed that one. Yeah, and again, the key, like for that activity, is let's just say that you wanted to pass over the cone. If you wanted to make sure that you're going to that, that this cone was in the center of your horse and you'd be successful, we would line it up on your right, heel, over there, and that's right. approximately like the center of your horse. So if you kind of look down as a, as a sight reference, your foot, if it's hanging down in its neutral position, tells you where your center of your horse is at. Horses. Excellent. Those kinds of skills where you can actually control where the horse is putting his feet are really important for what uh -huh. we do. You're, oh, you're right. It's the feet. Yeah. You have okay. to control the feet. Come on. Ooh. He did it, but I messed up. That's okay. <laughs> Wrong That's okay. foot. You the can other, tell. The other thing that you, you can, can tell kind I've of, got a greenhorn here. The other thing that would kind of make you feel a little bit more successful is realize that you can move your leg. So let's just say that, give me a stop for a second. Whoa. Whoa. Just have him stop moving his feet. Whoa. Let's just say, for example, that you're right here and that you can move your legs, so where you contact your horse in terms of applying pressure is going to determine what part of your horse is, is going to move. So you're never just going to have your horse just work perfectly where your leg is just going to ask from one position and he's always going to understand that, what that means. Mm -hmm. So let's just say as you're going in that direction, his rear end is lagging behind, then you might need to put your leg farther back and say move back your there. butt over more. If his shoulder is lagging behind, you might look your like take your leg a little bit more forward, forward and move the shoulder over. So as you're going in this direction, I might be moving my leg back or middle or forward as I see as is necessary. So it's kind of like reading what your horse is giving you at that moment and making the appropriate correction. You're always making little corrections. So much of this is really basic horsemanship 101, mm -hmm. but it all applies to police work out in the field. Oh, for sure. For and sure. It's just but, basic Western horsemanship that we're right. using here. And, but one of the most important things that these horses do is actually the moving crowds. Moving crowds, that's an important component. All right, let's yeah. try that one. Excellent, okay, let's do that. Um, overall, a lot of horses don't have that confidence to be able to push like that. You know, understand that when, we're, when I'm working with this horse on the ground, I want him to move away from my pressure. I don't want him to push into me when I'm on the ground. So we need to teach our horses how to be brave and deal with that. So very frequently, the initial, the initial lesson that the horse is going to to have to experience and understand is being able to follow or push a person as that person's retreating. We want our horses to win. If right. our horses get defeated in training, then they're not going to work for us in the field. The initial lessons that the horse needs to be able to accomplish is simply advance on me as I retreat. Okay. When we're training, the problem always goes away. In the real life, the problem won't go away. Right. But if the problem doesn't go away here and the horse gets defeated and scared, he's never going to want to go to that, into that problem in the future. So we want our horse to have experiences of layer upon layer of succeeding over and over and over. And this is lesson one of succeeding. So walk towards me. And all I would simply do is as you walk towards me, I go away. So he thinks that he's causing this, me to move away. He's right. bigger and braver and stronger than me. And we do this, do this basically over and over and over again. The horse advances on us, we retreat. The horse advances on us, we retreat. And that's right. what we do. Okay. Okay. Then as we go forward from there, we allow the horse to get closer. Okay. So I will still retreat, but now I can be able to put a hand on him and then retreat. All right. It's just an initial touch and then we retreat. And still he's advancing towards me. Right. Good. You can stop your horse right there. 
eventually we'd increase it a little bit more resistance. So as you're walking towards me, I would just push back and then retreat. Push, just don't let them bite me. And yeah. Push and then retreat. Push and then retreat. Push, and okay, stop them right there. Oh. Say whoa. Oh. Whoa. Go back. And so then it builds from there. And so you whoa. can imagine then that all the intensity just increases, but they have initial experiences of success, and then we build on that and build right. on that. And that's how we do the, that's how we push. That's how we do that. If you get caught with an illegal gun in LA, now you can be sent to federal prison, far away from your friends and family. So, if you think it's cool to carry an illegal gun or commit a crime with one, you've been watching too much TV. Otto and the other horses are good and warmed up. Now it's time for the officers to go to roll call and then everyone hits the streets. All right, guys, here's how we're going to do it today. We're working uh, crime suppression in Central. Um, we'll go ahead and put our vehicles in our trailers where we've been parking them over there by Parker Center on 1st Street. Uh, this will be the lineup for the day. Um, I'll be 40 Edward. Sergeant Baptiste will be 50 Edward. R81 will be Officers De Leon and Terrazas. Here. 82 will be Nut Wynn and Kevin Scott. Here, sir. 83 will be Grogan and Thatcher. Here. 84 will be da Daniels and Valdez. Here, sir. 85 will be Buckley and Copeland. Eighty-six will be Coleman and Mulford, and Joe uh, Nepo Messino, and eighty-seven will be Gasca and Kinney, and units eighty-six and eighty-seven will handle uh, chase and booking stay out of uh, Metro Jail section. Any questions about our lineup? All right, uh, Chuck and Joe had an arrest last week that uh, turned into a twenty-four hour overnight type incident. Um, I spoke to the main um, person that's in, responsible for the jails. And this is what I was told. If it looks like it's going to be a hospital caper, where we're going to actually take an individual, um, go to a facility where the MT could take all night long, we're not going to want to go to California Hospital because the delays uh, require that we then staff uh, uh, basically protection on that particular arrestee till it's OK and released for booking. Um, because of the closeness of 13th floor, um, Jail personnel doesn't always necessarily understand that that's an option, although we're trying to get that in writing so it's, it's very clear to everybody. Um, but if you have a situation where they want to take an arrestee and send it over to California Hospital, um, we want to um, recommend that we take the body to 13th floor. So once we get into a position where it's going to be a hospitalization, deputies are there and they can obviously handle and watch the body and we can go back out and do our thing, either write reports or go back to work, whatever the case may be. If you come into a situation where we have a delay at the jail and there's a question about what we should do as far as further medical treatment outside of Metro Jail section and it, it seems like there's a, a conflict issue there, just go to hold of any of the supervisors, let us go over there and see if we can uh, prevent that. It creates a big problem on the back end of our deployment as you know when we have guys that are going to be working through the night um, sitting on a, on a body that really we, sh we have resources that can handle that in another way. All right, anybody else have anything for roll call for today? All right, let's go ahead and uh, um, get out there and uh, start our crime suppression efforts, and we'll talk to you guys later. If you need anything, just get a hold of me on the radio, and we'll talk to you guys later on. All right, thanks. downtown area, it's Skid Row, and it's very high concentration of narcotics activity. 
a very high transient population. So what we're doing, uh, we're, we're looking out for uh, mainly narcotics activity in this area. And uh, being on horseback, uh, it kind of gives us a higher elevation where we can kind of look over some of the cars and see if uh, some of that activity is occurring. See like uh, this street over here to the right, we usually get a lot of narcotics activity. Looks like there's nothing going on right now. Folks, we're going to talk to this guy. He's running his bike on the sidewalk here. What up, sir? How are you doing? Uh, you know you can't ride your bike on the sidewalk? So in this particular situation, the officers observed uh, this individual on his bicycle. Um, he's on a sidewalk. Uh, he's going in and out of pedestrian um, traffic. Um, because of the observed uh, violations, uh, the pedestrian violations, the bicycle infractions, they, they went ahead and initiated a stop for those said violations. Um, basically at that point, they just uh, started asking him some simple questions, found out that he was on parole. Um, they did a want warrant check to see if he had any outstanding warrants. Uh, multiple names came back. Uh, the officers asked for a, a central area um, team to come by so they could verify and they found out that he's actually a parolee at large. Started out with a very simple stop and now he's going to be going to jail on a, on a felony. Let's call the rhino, Nancy. Just a second here. You're drinking, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, but it's not bothering nobody. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can't drink out here in public? Yeah, but I was drinking. Crocker. You're moving though, you're right over here and you're drinking. Mm -hmm. So now I gotta check you out. Mm -hmm. Hey, when you're down, can you come across the street? You gotta pick up. My name is Akbar. Akbar, do you mind if I take a look inside your pocket, sir? Yeah, what are you gonna do it anyway? Well, do you mind? Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I don't. Okay. I, I do not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I will. Mm -hmm. Which uh, wall is your idea, sir? Huh? Which wall is your idea? It's in, uh, this one? The brown one? Okay, I'm going to take it out, okay? How about, is this one uh, also an ID right here? Okay. Same one? Okay. I like beer. You can't drink it in public. So here's a situation where the officers turn the corner, and as they turn the corner, they observe this gentleman basically with a beer to his lips in the middle of drinking. So he observed the two officers on horseback. Um, set the beer down and spit out the contents of that was actually in its mouth. So that was the re reason for the stop. You know, it's interesting. I, it's very noticeable to me that the crowd around doesn't get nearly as agitated with the horses as they might with a black and white. I, I've never seen anything like it. Um, people are going to, to jail out here, and I, I got to tell you, more often than not, they're really in. A, they're they're not complaining about it. Um, so many people don't really see the, the mounted officers out here and expect them to go out there and enforce laws. They think that we're out here just to kind of show a presence um, and to deter crime just basically be, by being highly visible. But that's not the case. Um, all of our guys are very anxious to come out here. We look for, um, for law violations and, and we, we like to you know, throw bad people in jail that are committing a lot of crime. Um, People Amazingly, are a little more accepting of the horses than they are black and white? I got to be uh, honest with you. It seems like not only um, are the, the individuals that we're in contact with um, usually not, in, not agitated with us, but we gather crowds and people want to come over and talk to the officers and they want to look at the, uh, the horses. And it gives us a very uh, positive uh, format to do some outreach with the community where people are actually willing to talk to us and we, and we exchange positive dialogue. Um, you don't get a lot of that um, in this type of suppression effort, um, and I think a big part of it is because we are out here, you know, working in, on these horses, wearing cowboy hats. We're very inviting, and we want the public to come and talk to us. That's that's one of the great things about working this detail is we get an opportunity to talk to people in a very positive manner, which is great. Hey, Sergeant Porter, we. Uh came across a female a couple minutes ago that was uh, sitting on the corner and was uh, appeared to be smoking cocaine from the pipe. So I'd like to, she's already been transported, but we, as you know, we need to test for preliminary drug test for filing purposes. So I was wondering if you could do a preliminary drug test on this for me. Okay, is the, uh, is the arrestee still here? No, she's already gone. She's already been transported. Okay, let me grab my kit. Thanks. You can see that the, uh, 
the pipe has cocaine residue in it. She was smoking, it was still hot when we recovered it. And um, the city attorney requires for a filing, even though we are uh, narcotic experts, the city, re city attorney requires a preliminary drug test to show that there is cocaine or cocaine based present. And that's what Sergeant Porter is going to be doing for us. Basically, we're going to uh, run this swab through the uh, glass tube here, and if it turns blue, then it tests being positive for cocaine base. We'll see how blue that became. So we have a positive test for cocaine base, and I'll give you back the evidence. Thank you, sir. And then I will give you a, uh, a certification that it did, in fact, test positive for cocaine base. Thank you very much. So the horses aren't just a mode of transportation for the LAPD officers of the mounted unit. They're really helping to break down those barriers of distrust. And for the officers, well, the horses are helping them to make the streets of the city of Los Angeles a safer place. I'm Mary Grady. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again on another edition of Inside the LAPD.